If you want to learn how to make Ghibli style textures in Substance Painter, the latest course from the 3D coloring book was made for you. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to consider getting the course. Now let's get into this week's video. Hello guys and stylization community. My name is Vincent and today I will show you how I created this nice hand painted asset. For this asset, I use Blender for modeling, ZBrush for sculpting, 2D coat and Substance Painter for texturing. So let's begin. So for the concept art, I choose this one. Those are Wildstar's props by Andy Cottenham. And I choose to make this clock in the middle. Uh, once I was happy with the concept, I started the modeling in Blender. For the blocking, I started with really simple meshes and separated each one of them. I tried to fit the concept the most I can. For example, in this part, I added some edge loops, like right here, and scale it to get the nice curve that you can have right here and right here. And I broke all the straight line and get just a nice curve to get a really nice stylized look. And when I was happy with the shape, I added some bevels just to get uh, smooth edges and a subdivision that will help me later on ZBrush just to get some resolution. For two kind of details, uh, like fence, I started with a really simple plane added an inset and an extrude, then a bevel subdivision to get more resolution. Um, this kind of detail you can do it in Substance Painter, it's totally up to you, but I choose to do it in Blender and bake it in Marmoset. You Basically you will have the same result. So when I was happy with the shapes, um, I imported it in ZBrush. Once everything is in ZBrush, I start in my sculpt. So, first of all, I dynamic my sub tool, and I like to have some resolution on the parts that will receive some details. So I started with the orb cracks to sculpt the wooden planks details, and. I also keep an eye on the concept to see what I'm sculpting. Another thing I like to do is to play with the pen pressure of my tablet to play with the depth of the brush. And when I'm done to sculpt with the or cracks, I switched to the Tram Dynamic brush and I use it mostly on the edges to break all the sharp edge. And also to add more detail. Another thing I like to do is to use the mask lasso to sculpt the larger details like these big shapes right here. So for this, I draw a shape like this. And I used the move brush with uh, big size and I move just a little bit to get the, the details and I continue to sculpt to get this result right here and I 
used all these techniques everywhere. For example, on this part, use details. I just use the mask lasso to draw the shape like this and use the move brush and simply strut it like this to get the details. So when everything is done I just use the decimation master plugin, decimate everything and switch back to Blender. Back in Blender, I imported my decimated mesh right here and I reuse the base mesh to make my retopology. So to achieve that in Blender, I simply make decimated mesh unselectable by going on the filters and I clicked on the restriction toggles selectable and disable it so my mesh can't be selected anymore and the next step is by simply enable the snapping tool and the type of elements you want is the face so when I move my vertex, it snap on the faces. So the retopo become much easier like this. And when my retopo is done, I make all my UVs. So I can import it in Marmoset and bake my high poly on my low poly. In Marmoset, I only imported two parts just to show you about those kind of pens details I spoke earlier. And I make sure the high poly is in the projection cage of the low poly. And I painted the skew to avoid anything weird during the bake. And when everything is done, your normal should look like this. When my bake is done, uh, I switch back to Blender just to clear everything and merge every single part into a single mesh. So that I can import into Substance Painter and 3D Coat. For the texturing part, I simply started by separating each material into different folders with some black masks and the color selection. So I started with the metal by adding a simple base color based on my concept. Then a second one with a black mask and a paint and the third one just to darken some area. Then I added an ambient occlusion layer in multiply just to darken the area affected by the ambient occlusion and a gradient with some colors just to add some shadow details. Then I added a curvature layer in overlay with a level and a blur just to lighten my edges. Then a lighting layer with a filter called baked lighting stylide. So this one. Oh. So this layer helped me to get a nice and smooth light on the top of my meshes and this layer is in color dodge just to, to get color information and I painted 
some damage details with a height and I apply this process to each materials second metal the wood that you can see I started with a simple base color then a second one the third one an ambient occlusion and multiply curvature and the light I just don't paint some damage details because those are not needed then the cables the neon lights and the inside of the clock and at last I added a 3D line eye gradient in overlay just to help me to blend everything together and once I'm done with the base color I simply export my textures and put everything in 3D coat so once I imported everything in 3D coat I started to hand paint my textures so the first thing I did is to pick my base color and I added a first layer of paint played with the saturation and lightness of this to create some darker and lighter area to add some details and for this I just followed my sculpt so it was really easy and for this part it was really rough because I just wanted to add some details at some area like this and I mostly use a big size of brush Some details right here. Right. And when I'm done with the first layer, I added the second layer with this time some color variation. So I mostly use the hue to add some bluish, red-ish or green-ish area. So it was an extra layer of details and an extra layer of colors as well. So I used a smaller size of brush just to clean the first layer with the big brush stroke like this and once I was happy with this layer of paint I added some highlights right here so for this part, I simply took the base color of my mesh and I light this a bit and play with the saturation and I use small stroke just to highlight some areas where the light should go here here and when I'm done with this layer of highlights I just added 
another layer just to add some extra details in the inside. And that's pretty much it for the wood. It's really simple. And for the metal, I started to add a first layer of paint, add some extra details. So same, I use some base color made in Substance Painter. Just play with the lightness and saturation and add some details here and here. Um, and what I've done with some details like this, get some variation, I added a second layer in the metal with some color variation, like this. Added some variation, some areas. You see. So it can be really rough because I lowered the opacity, so you can see. You can see really, you can't really see it. And I added another layer of details, like the yellow strips. So this part, I did it with vertex lines. So it was really easy to follow my mesh like this. As you can see, it's really easy to paint straight lines. And when I'm done with this layer, I added the highlights. Same thing, I pick base color, lightness and saturation, maybe the hue a bit. And I started to put some highlights. And also on the details I painted on the first layer, to add some extra depth. add some extra details and when I've done with this part I added an extra layer of details like the lakes like here or here or if even in the bottom of this big part and I did the cables, so same process, I added some extra highlight details. And the last part was the clock, so it was a little bit of work because it was really tiny, but easy to do. And that's pretty much it. So once I am happy with my hand paint, I just exported the texture to re-import it in Substance Painter. So I imported my hand paint texture I made in 3D coat right here. And I just put the base color in the color channel of the material. I added a paint just to clean the sticker and a sharpen filter just to add some sharpness in the texture so this way it looks more stylized and after that I just added some roughness and metallic by using the 
ambient occlusion and the curvature maps, just with some levels. Same for the metallic. I use the ambient and the curve. And same with the levels, but on the affected channel metallic. And when I'm done with those details, I just reworked the stickers because I didn't like the first one I made. It was really messy. And the last thing I did, just to put a small gradient that will help to blend everything together. And that's pretty much it for the texturing. I imported everything in Marmoset, so my funnel mesh and all the textures. I created a new material with the Unreal 4 template and add every single map in it. I played with the intensity of the emissive just to get a stronger glow. For the glass, I created a simple mesh. And for the material, just a simple texture made in Photoshop and put the alpha channel into the transparency and it's done. So that's it. Thank you Thomas for this opportunity and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.